Good morning, YouTubes. I got a lot to do today. I want to do a big casting video of all my little sculpts I made. I want to do some foam today. And I want to do some fiberglass. We got a ton of shit to do. Let's get busy. Let me show you what I got going. So, I've got all my little monsters I made that I sculpted. Here's all my originals. Little devil, the sea creature, my little numbskull, my pumpkin, my piranha fish. In the meantime, I've sculpted a little Frankenstein, a wolf face, a Nosferatu, an alien, a mummy, a little goblin. I did make a little uh, uh, Bride of Frankenstein, but I wasn't real happy with her. I may redo her, so I'm not real thrilled, so I never molded her. Uh, I made a little moon. I'm going to make a second copy of him. And I got a little, little brain that I made, and I got to mold him yet when I get some more silicone. So those are some backbender projects, but I want to make a bunch of guys today. Using Smooth On 300 and 325. I got a bunch of uh, pigments and powders I've been collecting and hoarding up off of Amazon and Hobby Lobby. Uh, I want to make some spikes today and I want to make some foam skulls. I finished my uh, second mold that you guys didn't see. I've topped it off with some more silicone and popped that one out so I got two skull molds. I've been using uh, great stuff, just messing around. That's a great stuff skull. I just put some chassis paint on and dry brush and it shrunk up a little bit. Chassis paint doesn't eat it as bad as I thought it would, so not too bad for uh, great stuff. Got another great stuff foam. He's pretty cool. He didn't shrink up as bad, but they're not bad, but we're going to use some bitty foam, six pound foam density. We're going to try that in there and then see what we can make out of that. And these are the same other little great stuff skulls that come out of there. Here's the jawless one on the bottom. And they're pretty cool. Flat bags, you can saw them off. I threw some uh, spray paint on this one to kind of uh, distress it and let it eat a little bit. So we got a lot to do today. So let's go ahead and start with, yeah, let's do the foam. Let's make some foam skulls. All right, like I said, Bitty Mold Supply, Brick in the Yard. That's where I got the foam from. Uh, these guys were about 80 bucks for both gallons together. We're gonna mix equal parts A and B. I have pre-warmed the molds. I went ahead and heat gunned them. You all know I hate freaking waiting. Um, this will help give the, uh, the foam a better skin. You don't wanna use it in cold or humid conditions. Not great for foam, I hear. So we're gonna give this a shot and see what comes out. Heat gun. All right. This guy here. All right, we're gonna do this over the garbage can in case you have an epic fail and we have to abort. So, I don't want another, uh, I don't want a Kathy LaBoo situation on my hand. I saw it happen to her and I was like, oh no, not for us. Okay, so we're gonna go about, eh, maybe half or so. Kind of, it looks like maple syrup. Probably don't taste like it. Okay, I'm gonna cap him up. you side by side. Ooh, kind of a funky smell. Ooh, this stuff's real thick and syrupy. All right. I don't know how much is enough, but I know it's A to B. So, come on, buddy. Grip dry. All right. So, here goes nothing. We're going to mix the thinner stuff. This stuff's a little bit thinner. We're going to mix this into the thicker stuff. We gotta mix the hell out of it, wait for it to kick, and then dump it in the molds and swish it around. Now we get everything even. All right. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, it looks just like a maple syrup. Ooh, now it's turning kind of a milky coffee color. That's kind of cool. Mix this, we got a couple of minutes. I'm gonna do, hell, you know, this may be overkill, I don't know. Hopefully it's enough for two skulls. We're about to find out. All right, scrape them sides, get down on the bottom. Like I said, the molds are preheated with a heat gun. I should be doing this in 70, 80 degree weather, but hey, Halloween doesn't wait for no time. We gotta do it when we can. So that looks like a nice and coffee consistency. Drop that in there. Ooh, it's already starting to warm up. We're gonna pour that in the lowest part of the mold first. Pour some in this little guy. He's probably going to take more because he's bigger. All right. 
I'm not going to scrape anything off because I don't know if I got enough anyways. And then we just sort of take it and swish it around. Cover them eye sockets. And this will give it a nice skin and help it get in all those little cracks and crevices I molded. All right. Okay. Let the magic happen with that one. Let's do this one. This stuff's going to take about a half an hour to dry. So we'll put this aside once it starts to kick. And then we'll move on and do something else. It does not want to go over those eyes. Come on now. Come on, baby. Spill over them eyes. Come on. Okay, there we go. All right. I can see stuff starting to happen. Should kick in a couple of minutes. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to foam up. It's starting to change color. I guess I better leave that alone. All right, it's foaming up. Let's see. Well, you can see it kind of thickening up. That's pretty cool. Starting to change colors. All right. Let's uh, let that rise, and we'll check back on it in a minute or two. All right, it's been about yeah, maybe 60 seconds later, less than a minute and a half. They're getting there. We'll check back. All righty, folks, it's been about probably two minutes later. That's what the cup looks like. It's pretty warm. This stuff does have an exothermic reaction. It means it kicks off a little bit of heat, so you probably don't want to be holding this in your hand. So we're going to put this aside. We're going to let these guys do their thing, and then we're going to go and move on to fiberglass. I've got all these little studs and stuff that I made up. Uh, I want to mix up some fiberglass resin and make us up some studs um, and some spikes. Move this out of the way. I've got my favorite cheapy Bondo brand resin. Most Bondo products suck, but the resin is awesome. I got probably oh, maybe 10 ounces or so here, which means that's going to be a uh, hundred drops of hardener. And with this resin already being a dark amber color, which is kind of cool, um, we can go ahead and mix in anything. We can put copper powder in it. Uh, this is a charcoal color. All these guys I got off Amazon. Iridescent pewter gray. I got black mica powder, which is really a dark charcoal color, it looks like. And we got two different kinds of gangster gold. So let's go with the gangster gold on this one. This stuff wants to be everywhere, so... All right, let's do this. This one I think I picked up at Hobby Lobby with $6.99, Pearl X. Kind of a cool brand. I've also got their uh, antique silver. Looks pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to take this stuff. Before I put the hardener in, ooh, that's probably too much right there. But how much is enough, really? All right, we're going to catch him back up because this dust wants to fly everywhere. When you use a clear spoon, I mix this stuff so I can see the consistency and know if I'm close or do I got to put more. I can kind of see through it, use the transparency of it. Ooh, that's kind of a cool bronze color. I'm really digging that. Let's try this other gold. Put some of that in there. Looks like it's got a lot more metallic to it. Ooh, that's probably overkill. That was unfortunate. And this one is another one. These big ones you get on Amazon for 10 bucks. It's a uh, deco room, another Amazon. I'll try and put links for all this crap below in the description. I don't even remember where I got it from. All right, there's our new gangster gold. Look at that, there we go. That's some 24 karat stuff right there. Scrape that side. Now I'm gonna pre-mix this as best I can. Then I'm gonna dump the hardener in and we're gonna go. I wanna get this mixed up as good as possible now. This stuff will also kick off some heat when you're holding it, and you don't want to put it in your hands because fiberglass gets hot, especially with the amount of hardener I put in there. You're supposed to put uh, 10 drops for one ounce, but I put more to make it go faster so we can get stuff done because I freaking hate waiting. Oh, look at that. Now that's some gangster gold. That's a paint job right there for a bowling ball or a bass boat. All right, let's get it all mixed up. All right, let me take the spoon out. Eh, I just dumped it back in there. Okay, spoon out, hardener in. Let's see. 
try this. Okay, so we got uh, 10 ounces. No, that's probably six, 10 ounces. That's like 100 drops. That's about yeah, that much. And cap open the second tube. And about yeah, that much more. All right. Scientific measuring here on cobbles and candlesticks, people. All right. Now we got to mix the hell out of it. Yep, I feel that cake. It almost immediately thickens up and feels like cake batter once you dump that resin in there so that you know you got enough in there and it's working. And you can buy this stuff at any auto parts store. You can get quarts of it. I buy the gallons because I use it a lot. I think that gallon cost me 35 bucks on sale years ago. I've been sitting on the bottom of my cabinet. So we're going to move our little baby numb skull. And we're going to dump in some resin. I found these guys at a Hobby Lobby. I thought they'd make some cool studs or spikes too. And they're actually like little gems or something in the in the cake maker aisle or whatever. I got those on sale for like reduced for like two bucks or something like that. Something ridiculous cheap. All right. Let's pour all this in. See what we get. All right, folks, I'm gonna fill up these molds and then I'll come back. All right, got the fiberglass resin poured up in all the molds. Those are the little square spikes, those are the round spikes. I use some extra on these little, uh, little gem uh, silicone things. I think those make cool spikes. And with the leftover resin, I went ahead and brushed out that great stuff skull. I know it's gonna eat it. It's gonna shrink it down bad, but I just wanna see what it looks like. And besides, we get a free pumpkin stem out of this, so might as well burn the chip brush too. And we'll check on him later after that stuff cures. And here's the uh, six pound foam skulls. Ooh, it's already pretty freaking, pretty hard. Man, that's like, <clears throat> ooh man, that may be uh, ready sooner than I thought. And here's the cup. Oh man. Well, hey, let's go do some other stuff first. Then we'll come back, we'll pop these suckers out and see what they look like. All right, so I'm looking at these skulls. I got the fiberglass put away while we were working on that. It says a half an hour, but it's probably been maybe 15, 20 minutes while we did the fiberglass work. So let's try and demold this little guy and see what it looks like. Maybe a little more, there we go. And again, two gallons, that's overkill. But you guys stay tuned, because I got something else in the works. Now that's pretty awesome. I can still hear it crackling a little bit, so maybe it's not ready. But even if I pulled it early, that's a still good looking skull. This is our bitty mold, six pound foam. This is great stuff. So, not too bad. I'm gonna let the other one sit, we'll work on other things, we'll let that guy dry. And uh, we'll come back and check on those later and see what they look like. All righty, so we're back at the table. We're going to start off the smooth cast 300. This is one-to-one, -one, simple stuff. It'll cure fast, a couple of minutes. It turns to white, but white is kind of boring. So I'm going to put all my originals over here. We'll pick some molds. And we'll make some guys. And little monsters. All right, so I've already got parts, equal parts A and B in the little cups. Um, I've been using some of the powders. This is a free powder I got that was a little trial size for another powder I bought, which is supposedly glow in the dark. So why don't we do a moon in glow in the dark. I'm gonna dust this mold. Just dump that, you don't get too much. All right. That's that. All right. And then let's dump the rest on the alien head. There we go. That we're not wasting anything. So, we've got that mold coated. Let's coat the alien's face. Like I said, this is going to be boring a white. Mr. Alien, that might be too much for the alien, huh? Let's dump it right off in the moon. Okay. All right. 
Let's do, uh, let's see, where is Nosferatu? He's white. We'll do a skull in white. Or maybe green, that's the devil. Frankenstein, he's a good green candidate. All right. Uh, let's see. I got these alcohol inks. I don't even know if you're supposed to do this, if it mixes in with this stuff or not. So, this could be an epic fail. Let's find out. Lettuce. All right, lettuce. Again, I'm going to use clear spoons from the dollar store to mix this stuff so I can kind of see the uh, consistency of it. We'll start off a little bit. Oh, that probably overkill. Okay, lettuce. Ooh, just kind of mixing in there. Look at that. Kind of a ugly green color, transparent. Now this might turn like a, uh, a pastel color once I mix it. All right, so we're gonna mix it in there. All right, there's part A, there's part B. Kind of a pukey green color, which will probably lighten up since this stuff does cure in white. Mix the hell out of it. All right. Let's dump it. I think that's good. We'll use the sea creature as a backup mold. Ooh, there's a lot of bubbles in there, but this stuff does not need degassing. And if it works, it has bubbles in the moon. Hey, I'm okay with that. All right, that's pretty cool. Do the alien. We'll do a little skull. And I'm probably going to have to dump the rest of this. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to make the monster, the Frankenstein monster. We'll see. He may just be a shallow mold. Yeah, he's going to be a little shallow. That's all right. And I got a little hack for you guys. It's already, it should start to cure and change color. It'll turn like a whitish color, the skull. I got a couple of little magnets I bought from Amazon, little kits. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Um... This way you don't have to glue no uh, epoxy in. Put your magnets where you want them. And these guys are from Amazon. Again, I'll try and link them in the description, x -Bec magnets. I just put a couple of nails on there to hold them up off of the uh, little project you're working on. Is he gonna fit in Frankenstein? No, too low. Okay, so Frankenstein's a little low. We'll save him for another one. So, it should only take a couple of minutes. We'll watch this stuff kick and see what it looks like, and then I'll show you guys. Should only take a few minutes. I hope so, because I freaking hate waiting. All right, let me pause this until uh, I see some color change. All righty, now we're getting somewhere. I bet you that alcohol delayed the uh, curing time. That's Frankenstein in real time. Check them out. It's turning a sort of a whitish color. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Which means he's probably going to be like a really, really pale green. And that should just move all the way out to the sides, all the way until it solidifies. Oh, well, Frankenstein. So the alcohol inks really don't change the color all that much. That white color really kind of takes over and bites in. All right, now the other guys have started to go. There's the back of the alien head. There's the back of the moon. I don't know if maybe the magnets play a role in delaying the cure time. Look at that thing kind of wrap around like a little moon. That's pretty awesome. And this again is smooth on 300 parts A and B, one to one. And we threw some alcohol ink in there, which we probably shouldn't have, but who cares? We can do whatever the hell we want. Frankenstein's filling out. Everything's thrown into plastic. There goes the back of the little skull. The numb skull, the chin's starting to turn a little bit. The alien's starting to go. The moon's turning white. All right, we'll check back on these guys in a couple of minutes. We'll demold them and see what we got, and then we'll do some more. All right, these guys are kind of curing. Put them over to the side. It's been maybe seven, eight minutes. I'm going to give them a little bit of time. And then I want to mix up a mold. Let's do some orange. Uh, I got two equal amounts of 300 poured out. I got some orange glow in the dark dusted in the mummy and the pumpkin. I want to do a white Nosferatu. I'll do a sea creature. 
maybe a goblin for a pour off mold. I've got a little bit of orange dust in the molds, like I said. I'm gonna put a little bit, that's probably overkill, but this is gonna turn like a pastel color, I'm sure, because it's a white powder or it's a white uh, plastic. So, oh, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. All right, that looks really, really orange. I wanna mix this really well in this side. Now, spare two can't be orange. We'll see. All right, mix that powder resin in there. And scrape the bottom, get rid of bubbles. All right. Maybe we'll do the fish if I got enough. Okay, we'll mix in our equal parts B. That might be more than enough. Okay, mix this real good. You can see the color is already turning like a pastel orange color. It'll probably lighten up a whole lot more, just like these uh, guys do with the alcohol ink. We'll see. All right, kind of a cool little pearl uh, orange effect. All right, let's pour some molds. It'll be the pumpkin. He's had a pretty wicked underbite, so I've got to get those uh, teeth filled up in there. Tap it a little bit, help get air bubbles out. Now most of the powders in here go to the bottom of the mold. So if any problems, if some of your face, you have the most color in it. So that's kind of cool. Stick a little uh, magnet in the pumpkin. Scoot him over a little bit, do the mummy. Ooh, missed him a little bit. His little bandages. Man, put a magnet on him. Now I'm doing these magnet styles, so I give them out to my trick-or-treaters. We got a pretty small subdivision, so we do treat bags. So when you come to my house trick-or-treating, you get paid on Halloween. So I want to make a bunch of these up before Halloween to give to all my little trick-or-treaters. All right, do that one there. And we got a little bit of stuff left in here. Let's see if we can pour up a demon head. Get his teeth in there real good. Little horn pockets. All right. Man, we still got more. Okay. Put a magnet on the little demon. Tap him. Tap these guys. Let these guys roll. And maybe, just maybe, there's enough to do the piranha skeleton. We'll see. His tail. That creep in there. Do his head. Come on now, fill them spines up. There we go. And we got just a little bit left of orange. I hate to waste it. Look we dump it in. Uh, I'll dump it in the sea creature. Probably gonna have a crazy color combination, but we'll see. No sense of wasting it. All right, let's see if we can pop these guys out. Do the alien first. Take our little nails off the magnets. We'll just pry away from the mold a little bit. And look at that, folks. We got us an alien. A little bit of flash and we can razor blade off. How freaking cool is that little guy? And then that mold is clean and it's ready for another one. I'm using no mold release agent. I'm just going straight filth. Dump and go, dump and go. And I can always sand that off with some 80 grit layer. And we got us a little numbskull. How freaking cool is that? All right, let's do our moon. I really love the moons. I'm excited about this one. How cool is that? Just like a lumpy, bumpy moon. All right, I'm gonna open up Frankenstein, get him out. 
I'll let this cure, and then we'll start mixing up some transparent colors and see what those look like. All right, everything's starting to kick. You can see everything's turning that white color, and it will dry this sort of like pale uh, pumpkin-y orange color. So we'll pop those out. We'll do a different color. All right, we've moved on to 325 uh, parts A and B, one of each. This is transparent, so this should be the cured color. I did a load of green. Let's dump in and go. All righty, the orange is out. The green is in the molds. I'm going to, I think, mix and match and play with a bunch of colors, and then I'll come back and show you guys what all I made. Okay, we're done. I went a little crazy. I made a bunch of everything. There's my sea creatures. I got my original on the bottom. There's my original moon. My aliens. There's my original. Made a bunch of Frankensteins. My original goblin. Who he kind of looks like Frankenberry. My piranha skeletons. My little devil heads. My pumpkins. Look at all my evil babies. All the skulls. Went ahead and we molded some uh, spikes. I did a load of copper, did some gangster gold. Here's a railroad spike. Uh, finished that mold, got that done. That's all fiberglass resin. We got some five or six pound uh, styrofoam rigid foam skulls. They turned out pretty freaking awesome. Had a hell of a day, made a lot of stuff. I'll give you guys one last sweep. If you guys ain't watching, uh, come on to the cobwebs and Candlesticks uh, Facebook page. There's a bunch of extra content up there and behind the scenes stuff and little stuff I'm doing. But since I got you here before I let you go, let me turn the lights out. All right, lights are out. My evil babies glow. Look at all that. That's from the powdered resins. And then you can put powdered resins in clear and go ahead and brush them on. The Frankenstein's glow. That's just awesome. I think I'll put them on a big uh, steel board outside in front of the house. Let the trick-or-treaters pick what they want. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's been a long one. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for watching all my evil babies be born. I will see you guys again soon. And we are going to do a giveaway soon for uh, probably 250 subscribers. And we got a big rigid foam uh, video coming pretty soon. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks for hanging with me. Keep it evil.